Who's got an opening question? Anybody? Hands up? Anybody? Yes, sir. Can you stand up, please? Yeah. How much money do a Cardiff on PMG? And how close a Cardiff used to do in deal with Langston at the moment? The situation with the PMG loan is that uh, at the moment we owe them nothing. Um, shortly uh, they will have a commitment to put in up to £11.3 million pounds of cash which we have securitised or will securitise against what we call premium debenture seats income, which is 2,250 premier seats in the new stadium. And essentially that income stream for the first five years will repay the debt to PMG. Without that contribution, the club would have never been able to build the stadium. Just so you're aware, the stadium uh, commitment from the club was 30% of the total development cost of the whole development, which is £58 million. And two years ago, we had nothing to contribute towards that. We sold an Indian Park to Red Row Homes. We secured funding from the uh, Football Foundation in terms of a grant. And Paul Guy's company, PMG, with Michael, uh, very uh, kindly, as far as we were concerned, uh, put up a guarantee of cash of 11.3 million towards our 30% contribution. But that is all being securitised about against Premier Dementia Seat Income. Uh, in terms of Langston, um, we are very hopeful that uh, both parties believe it would be crazy to go to court. And whilst I can't say too much today, I would be extremely disappointed if a resolution, very amicable resolution, wasn't found well in advance of the planned court date of the same week of March. Hi, Dave. Pete. Hi, Kofi. Um, yeah. I know it's coming to the end of the transfer window, and now we're all concerned that we don't lose any of our players before the deadline tomorrow night. It's 24 hours. Uh, 24, I know, I don't panic, you know, but uh, no, is there any opportunity then, to, I think there is in, in February then, if we needed to buy or loan a player, we could still do it, so even though the date is tomorrow that it finishes, Dave, that we could, if you still needed a player then in February, it is still possible, is that correct? Or Are incorrect? you trying to say yeah, this I'll question? Or? Yeah, I'll, I'll ask Dave that question. No, what happens is once the transfer window closes tomorrow and a week has to go by and then we're allowed to loan players for 93 days maximum. So is there a possibility that could happen if we get injuries or or for any other reason, you know, if we wanted to just strengthen the squad? Or is that up to the chairman? <laughs> Flick a coin. Um, yeah, of course it is. At the moment, because of the situation and the parameters that we have to work within, We've got to run with what we've got. So if we did happen to have an injury, then I'd go to the chairman and I'd say, see whether we could do something about it. It's as simple as that. And um, it is hard. It's difficult. But at the moment, the players are fully focused on the job in hand and they're trying their best. And we've got one or two coming back from injury, and we hope that they don't break down. With Ricky Simaker, Trevor Sinclair, we'll probably have Warren Feeney back in the a little bit long, but and then trying to get Robbie back as well. So if we can keep everybody fit and get the long-term injuries back. Then we've got a far greater chance of having a you know much stronger squad. And certainly, the likes of Ricky uh, will be like new players coming yeah. into the football club. We haven't seen them for nearly 12 months. Let me, just, let me also just add to that. One of, one of the issues you know I noticed tonight in the Echo. A number of fans were saying, um, why haven't we moved already for loan players? The biggest issue you face with loan players is, of the quality that we would be looking for, the clubs would be insisting that they play first-team football. Now, who after last night's performance would you be dropping to actually bring in loan players? So, you know, what we've got to do is, as Dave said, we've got, from a week after tomorrow, an opportunity up to the third, I think it's the third Thursday in March, uh, when it's the final deadline for all the loans. We've got an opportunity, if we need to, to go out and get quality players from our contacts in Premier Football Clubs to fill the gaps if that's needed. But if we'd have gone out today, they'd have been saying, are you going to guarantee they're going to play? And the answer is, I can't guarantee that. The other thing you should be aware of, because I know a lot of people have been very nervous about losing current members of the first-team squad, in the last five days, we've had 
inquiries that would have led to offers had we encouraged them for four different members of our current first choice first team squad and we've told them all to get lost because I believe, the board believes, Dave believes that the best chance we've got of having a good end to the season is to keep the squad together that we've got and that's what we're going to do. Yeah, what's the uh, capacity of the new stadium going to be and is there room to extend the new stadium and what's the, what would be the new capacity? Did everybody hear that question? What's the capacity of the new stadium going to be and do we have room to extend? The stadium is designed for 30,000 seats uh, on day one, we've guaranteed to the council that we're not less than 25,000. As of whenever, I can't remember when Mike Lewis, I think it was the, the press conference last week on the Premier seats, Mike Lewis, who's the, uh, the director responsible from Langer Rock Building Stadium, said that the day we open will be not less than 25,800. We can move up to 30 without taking the roof off or doing anything more substantial. We have planning consent up to 60. Frankly, I would be delighted if we were selling out 25,800 every week because one of the biggest challenges we face as a club is we're competing with four teams with a parachute payment, probably another half a dozen with crowds in excess of 20,000 every week. And we're trying to make ends meet on 13,500, 14,000 crowds, 6,000 of which are standing places. Our net achieved ticket price is the second lowest in the championship because of the standing. And it's a struggle. So if we can sell out 25,800 every week in the new stadium, I'll be over the moon, you'll be over the moon, because it gives us a better chance to compete. Who are close to getting the naming rights? I don't know whether you're aware, but obviously the naming rights for the stadium um, are part of our resolution to pay back the debt to Langston. So whatever we achieve for naming rights up to £9 million, of current value uh, will be used to pay down that debt um, and therefore um, clearly it's very important to us because we want to pay the debt off. Uh, we've always committed to pay the debt, we will do, and we are um, in very early stage discussions with a number of companies. To be frank, the legal case has stalled that because people want to be assured the stadium is going to be built and I can assure you it is. Uh, we've therefore resurrected discussions over the last few weeks. And I think that uh, sometime between now and the autumn we'll be able to announce who it is, how much it is and what the stadium is going to be called. In the light of the Robbie Fowler situation, which is a major disappointment for us all, uh, is the club going to change his policy on signing with younger players, maybe on less money? And my second question, and these guys have done a brilliant job tonight, is the youth academy safe for the future? Because I believe it's very important for the future of Cardiff City. I'll answer that one. I mean, there seems to be a big, massive debate on Robbie Fowler. Robbie Fowler's had 12 starts and scored six goals. So if you brought in an old player or a young player and his tally was a goal every two <coughs> games, you'd be happy. The problem we had with Robbie was trying to get him fit because he'd missed the pre-season. <coughs> and unfortunately, he picked up an injury that could have happened to a young player. You can go out and spend £10 million on a player. And in West Ham's case, they went and spent four and a half million pounds on a plane. He got injured in training the following day, and he didn't have it. And my argument with a lot of people, and certainly um, my good friend David Giles from the Echo, who wants to sack, was um, why didn't we sack Ricky Simicke? We haven't seen him for twelve months. What, you know, what sort of arguments is that? Robbie Fowler is a very, very good player, and if anyone in this room doesn't think he is. And you must have had some great players here in your time at Cardiff City. So the policy is, if we can go out and find a Robbie Fowler of 18 years of age, I'm sure we would be spending somewhere in the region at this moment of around about £25 million on one player. We only get the likes of Robbie Fowler and Jimmy Hasselbank at our football club because they have a floor, and the floor is age. Otherwise, if they were Robbie Fowler and Jimmy Hasselbank three years ago, Cardiff City don't get anywhere near them. And I don't see many people moaning about Phillips at West Brom, who's actually two and a half years older than Robbie anyway. So I think everything that's been written about him is very unfair. And we've signed a quality, quality player that I don't think this football club has ever had before in its whole history. 